So yeah, I'm at the moment I'm located in New York because I'm here as a visiting visiting researcher at Parsons, but I am from from Finland Aalto University where where I'm a doctoral candidate working on my uh, dissertation about um, authorship and professionalism of uh, fashion designers in contemporary technological environments and digital fashion design is actually kind of part of my dissertation but of course it has a, a new uh, dimension now uh, during this uh, COVID-19 spring and just here so yeah so, and I'm also, as Anna-Mari uh, Mavanska told you earlier this, uh, this morning, I'm also part of, um, of, of Academy of Finland Strategic Research Council Consortium, Ida, Intimacy in Data-Driven Culture, and I'm in her project called Intimacy, uh, Creative Work and Design. So, what is then digital fashion? So the term refers to a practice that produces three-dimensional virtual clothing as prototypes or sample simulations for possible physical garments and uh, datafied digital um, garment representations. It can be used as a processual tool to assist design and sales as for example in case of Tommy Hilfiger um, that is entirely digitizing their design processes and showrooms. Mm, and digital 3D fashion design has also entered fashion schools, for example, both Parsons and uh, Pratt Institute have uh, included CLO 3D, which is a software uh, courses in their fashion design curriculum. But digital fashion also refers to an end product in itself worn only in virtual spaces where dresses, dressed avatars are uh, fluidly enmeshed uh, with our physical bodies and identities. So for example, it can be an AR experience where a digital only garment is tailored on one's own photographed body, as in this picture. Uh, or it can be a VR experience where digital garment is worn by one's digital twin, an avatar, a realistic one, besides self-expression in virtual reality, this can also be a virtual fitting service or space. And then it can be a skin in a video game uh, worn by an avatar that does or does not represent one's own body. The game in the picture is Animal Crossing for Nintendo Switch, which has become a best uh, seller for the, this Corona spring, operating in the intersection between the gaming and the fashion industry and providing a platform for both luxury brands and underground streetwear brands. And also digital garments have been around for decades in games and visual effect industry. Another turning point happened around a year ago when the Dutch company, The Fabricant, sold their digital only dress uh, in a blockchain auction in cryptocurrency uh, worth $9,500. So this was covered largely by fashion and mainstream media from BBC to Cosmopolitan. And since then, the amount of, kind of so-called digital, digital fashion designers has increased rapidly. And lately due to COVID-19, digital fashion has been again a popular topic in uh, fashion media. Uh, for example, in Vogue Business, it has been covered a lot. And so it's kind of a new, uh, a new growing field or subsector in the field of fashion design now becoming uh, abruptly relevant due to its non-physical essence. And it's, it's a tool for optimization, virtualization and digitalization of the design process, still relying on the embodied tacit knowledge of the designer, but it's also a new fashion culture a space and a community that redefine the dress body, the fashion object, and possibly the fashion designer. So I conducted two uh, in-depth case studies in using ethnographic methods and complemented by uh, also by secondary data. And 
these case studies are uh, Atekak and the Fabricant, which are basically, they are both pioneers and vanguards in, um, in the field of digital fashion, as well as influencers in, in fashion tech. And these two companies are, are similar in many ways, but also very different in terms of their relation to the body, object, and uh, their workflows. And actually, I first encountered the idea of, of digital fashion during my field work at Atakak in Sweden. Uh, the founder and designer, Richard Lindquist, uh, anticipated that it will be what the luxury brands uh, would get their revenue from in the future instead of perfumes and bags. And that digital garments will become a new medium for designers to express their ideas without kind of social limitations and uh, economic economic boundaries. And so Atekak builds on a link with uh, kinetic garment construction theory and the possibilities that the founders uh, saw in the utilization of the 3D software, the Clow 3D. Um, Atekak combines the digital and the physical and the starting point of their design is always the human body and the pattern. Atikak uses digital fashion as a tool for efficiency, creativity, and um, their design present, sell, produce models. But they also sell their digital garments in a virtual reality platform. And then again, the fabricant highlights that they are a digital only fashion house and they don't produce physical garments at all. So they design surreal surreal bodies and environments. And the starting point for their designs is the concept and uh, draping on the avatar. The digital garment, the story, and the digital experience uh, are the end product, merging the kind of the, the fashion design and, and animated film. And what kind of new norm this is for designers then? Well, uh, according to my findings, uh, these companies are, first of all, the architects of, of, of digital fashion, thus building everything from scratch um, in good and in bad. Uh, they face challenges in balancing between the artistic work and the client projects, as well as coping with, uh, with suspicious yet curious reception of the fashion industry. They are uh sorry they are practicing basically kind of a refined digital craftsmanship where the designer becomes a digital artisan uh, a, a designer maker at the same time and uh, when doing the digital um, samples using the embodied technical um, fashion knowledge yet suddenly regaining the artistic uh, independence with endless possibilities that one can test in, in 3D form. They design for digital experiences, digital bodies in motion, uh, virtual spaces and the virtual layer of expression. And the practices are driven by ethical motivation, pursuing transparency, sustainability and inclusivity. And the sustainability doesn't only refer to the social and environmental sustainability, but also to the sustainability of work, kind of contrasting the um, maybe like say self-exploitation -explo uh, culture of fashion design as a, a profession. They explicitly differentiate themselves from the traditional fashion practice, but also from the gaming world. And lastly, their authorial professional and organizational and material boundaries are rather fluid. They apply open source philosophy and in their work and are legitimized by the community, but they have also been legitimized by the uh, dominant fashion world, obviously, because of the media attention and uh, client collaborations. So in, in conclusion, I actually have a lot of questions uh, about this topic. So uh, in, I find those questions interesting in this area of, of research and uh, fashion design. So when looking at, at fashion primarily on the screens, uh, 
it is sometimes hard to tell the difference between the physical and the virtual. And can we experience digital fashion as we experience the material, tactile, and the social fabric of fashion? And could digital fashion replace some of our fashion needs and desires, uh, making the overproduction physical of physical clothing obsolete? And how the digital twins or non-twins affect the experience of our bodies? And will designers lose their tacit knowledge if they move to digital prototyping and sampling? Digital culture has been around for a long time and the idea of digital fashion might, might not be as strange as it first sounds. But however, probably we start experiencing the Zoom fatigue already because of the spring. So will this result in a desire for physical only uh, fashion experiences and what kind of risks does uh, digital fashion present in terms of, uh, for example, copying or other shady activity? And, or does it give, uh, provide possibilities in terms of, of layperson participation? And I finish with my questions. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Natalia, uh, for your presentation. And uh, do we have questions or comments? Uh, Elsie Skjold, uh, did you look into the current standardized uh, pattern development that makes most consumer bodies wrong bodies? Just a moment. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Stop share. So I'll check. Check the question again. Did you look into the current standard? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm aware. Um, aware of, of the uh, problem of standardization and it's actually a topic that they these these two case studies try to address to kind of escape this standardization and how it um, limits uh, limits who can experience who can experience fashion and how we experience it and how how it also limits the design of, of, of designers or work of designers so it's it's not in my focus because I'm not um, studying um, pattern making as it is, but I know that this 3D tool is also used by pattern makers. So it's kind of merges also these two professions together. Right. Thank you for, for the question. Yeah, actually uh, there is, yes, there is a continuation because the problem is not only about lack of tactility, but lack of designing for actual people. And uh, yeah, Natalia, thank you so much for your presentation.